In the previous video, we talked about process of elimination. And we said there that almost always, worst case scenario, is that you're going to get stuck between two choices. This is something, though, that happens a lot, especially on the harder questions. You'll see this. And if you think about it, that's what's going to make a question hard, that there's going to be two choices that seem pretty similar, that both seem that they can fit with the passage. And then what's hard about it is deciding which of the two is best. So when you're stuck between two choices, where both choices seem to, I'm going to underline here, seem to, have textual support because clearly they both can't be right. One of them is going to be based on what the passage is saying. The other is not. But at first, they may seem to have textual support. Try the following steps or the following approaches to break that deadlock. The first thing you can do is reread the question and ask yourself, did you miss something? A lot of times, for example, you might miss or you may not have been focusing on a particular line reference. Maybe you should be focusing on particular lines. And once you focus on particular lines, you realize that, oh, it can't be this choice. It's got to be the other one. Um, if you reread the passage itself after you reread the question, you might notice something that you didn't notice the first time. So again, reread the passage. Sometimes you need to just read more passage. Maybe reading more of the passage after you've read the question will give you more of the context, right? If the question says, for example, in the passage, blah, 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 that might be an indication that the question is a bit more general. Maybe some more reading will help. One of the biggest steps you can do once you've done that is to look for half right, all wrong traps. Remember, these are the ones where even a single word can make all the difference. If the first part of the choice is correct, but the last word of the choice doesn't fit with the passage, the whole choice is wrong. And this is typically how they're going to make two choices seem similar or seem both right. You know, 90% of the wrong answer choice will be correct, but it's that last bit that doesn't fit with the passage is what makes it wrong. And that's what makes the choices seem so similar because they both seem more or less correct. And they are both more or less correct. But you have to be very focused and precise Right? You have to be very focused as to the differences in meaning and the wording of both choices because that's going to be the key most of the time to making that choice between the two. Um, finally, you can also, besides looking for half right all wrong, look for other trap choices to maybe make you, help you figure out an error that you might be making in reasoning. Right, So is the choice, for example, too extreme? Are you making assumptions or thinking about what could be true in the passage rather than what is true, what is stated in the passage? All these kinds of trap choices can help you avoid something that may at first t look tempting and go with a choice that may at first not seem as good, perhaps, but ends up being better because the other choice has a problem. And remember, the, the general rule of thumb, the answer is on the page. So you're through this process, you've got to constantly refer back to the text. Always go back to the passage. The answer's in the passage. Most of the time, the key is just finding the wording or the phrasing in the passage that points you to the answer.